Before we get started, just a reminder to everyone, I'd really appreciate you guys joining my OY Enthusiasts. It's $4.99 a month. It gives you live chats. We're going to be doing a live game chat tonight. It was supposed to be yesterday. I had some internet issues. That's the reason why this video is uploading so late, by the way. It gives you a bunch of really cool stuff, a bunch of MLB draft videos, a bunch of prospect videos. I update my top 15 prospects every month. And it really helps me out. It helps the channel grow. I would very much appreciate your consideration. I totally understand those who don't want to spend the $4.99 when you get a bunch of stuff for free. And I'll be conti I will continue to provide a bunch of cool stuff for free. But I would really appreciate the consideration. You just hit join. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Mariners lose two to nothing. They fall to 47 and 40 on the season, and they lose the first of the three games of the series with the Orioles. Go over the scoring place in the fourth, Anthony Santander singles to right to score Gunnar Henderson. And in the seventh, Cedric Mullen singles to center to score Jordan Westberg. Hey, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Even with a, a night to sleep on it, this game still frustrated the ever-loving you-know-what out of me. Uh, the only positives are they pitched fine. George Kirby was pretty darn good and a marked improvement over what he gave you against the Orioles the last time out. He had him off balance. He gave up seven hits, but, you know, and there were a couple of balls that were hit hard, no question about it, but for the most part, he avoided hard contact, had good command, did issue the one walk, but I thought George Kirby pitched really well, really well, and I thought Austin both pitched well. I continue to be impressed with Colin Snyder, even though I think the Mariners disagree with me, and a nice job by Bauman, a revenge game, facing his former team. Pitching was great. Pitching was great. And if you want to have uh, offensive positives, Josh Rojas went two for two. Simply Seattle provides simply the best in Seattle sports gear. Great stuff for the Mariners, the Seahawks, the Kraken, the Supersonics, Storm, all sorts of great Seattle teams. Cougars, Huskies, you can find it all at Simply Seattle. And once you find it all, use code MOLLYWAT15, please, because it saves 15% off your order. And it shows that you're paying attention to the show. M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5. Very much appreciate the support, and I appreciate you guys supporting Simply Seattle. Link in the description to make it nice and easy. Ha, ha, ha. Lots of places to go here. Uh, an absolutely pathetic offensive performance. Some credit to Grayson Rodriguez. Not a ton. Not a ton. And I'm not saying that Rodriguez... First of all, Grayson Rodriguez is one of the most talented young pitchers in baseball. You know that. You probably know that. However... I have a hard time crediting him. His command was pretty bad yesterday. Swing and miss stuff, there. Swing and miss stuff is there for every starter against the Seattle Mariners. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. They strike out a lot. But on a day where he didn't throw a lot of quality strikes, the Mariners just looked awful. I'm wondering how long I can hold off before I get into Jorge Polanco. And the answer is not long. Jorge Polanco, even while reaching by hit by pitch, played one of the worst games I've seen from a Seattle Mariner in a long time. Was it hit by pitch or walk? See, this is the thing about recording at 7 a.m. compared to... Uh... <sighs> Give me a second. It was hit by pitch. I... How do I forget that? Oh, right, because I'm 41 years old and my life is kind of in shambles right now. Um, it's not that bad. Life isn't that bad. I've got a lot of really cool things to announce. 
<clears throat> coming up. Anyway, uh, Jorge Polanco. Outside of that game Mitch Hanniger had against Atlanta in the final game of the year, it's pretty easily the worst game I've seen a Seattle Mariner play. And I'm not just talking about 2024 either. Those are the probably the two worst individual efforts from a non-pitcher that I have seen. Polanco's at bats were pathetic. He does reach by that hit by pitch, like I said, but he grounds into the double play and strikes out twice. And this is ugly, folks. Like, you can talk about Julio Rodriguez's struggles, and you should. You can talk about J.P. Crawford's struggles, and you should. But the the sheer lack of competence that the Seattle Mariners have gotten from Jorge Polanco and Mitch Garver, the two big offseason deals, and moves that I justified and didn't hate. I really like the Mitch Garver signing, in fact. I had some concerns based on the fact that, you know, his success as a DH hasn't been great, but the sample size was so small, I was like, it can't be that big a deal. You know, offense is offense. Okay. Guess I'm wrong. So far, anyway. And Jorge Polanco, I had concerns about health-wise. Acknowledge that when he's been healthy, he's been really good. Well, when he's been healthy, he has been absolute. He's been bad. He's been really bad. And tonight, you know, the obvious thing we want to talk about here. Well, it's morning now, but the obvious negatives from last night are the off is the offense. No question about it. JP was bad. Ty France drew a couple of walks, but a couple of other really bad at bats. Luke Rayleigh was bad. Dumper was bad. Canzone was bad. Julio was bad. Moving down in the lineup didn't do a dang thing, and it won't. The timing issues with Julio Rodriguez do not get fixed by putting him seventh. And do you really, you really want those other guys hitting a lot more than Julio Rodriguez? I don't. You're entitled to your opinion. Haniger. The offense was horrible. It was a horrific offensive performance again. That wastes a really good pitching performance against a really good offense. They pitched well. They sh If you give up two runs to the Baltimore Orioles, you should win. If you give up two runs to anyone, you should win every time. So, yeah, the offense was bad. But, man, even the runs they did give up, this middle infield defense stinks. I realize that I am not as in love with J.P. Crawford as everybody else off defensively. And you know what? Offensively now, too. 211-309-354. But the amount of balls that just get up the middle with this guy playing defense and Jorge Polanco, who just has no range. You don't even knock those balls down. You don't, the, the, the middle infield doesn't even knock those balls down. And I talked about this on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. It's weird that I haven't done a mile wide since Sunday. You got to start making plays. And no, their defense is not the reason why they're scuffling right now for the most part. It's because their offense has been anemic. Anemic. But both of those runs are preventable with above average defensive players. And Polanco, you know, he knocks a ball down, one ball down, not the ones that scored the runs. 
he was awful yesterday at the plate in the field. Hopefully he provided a ton of value in the clubhouse because this has been a horrific, horrific first half of the year for him. 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Surprised they actually had five guys reach scoring position, to be honest with you. I'm sure most of that in the ninth inning. This team just is not very good right now. And here's a positive. As bad as things are going, as well as the Houston Astros played in the previous week, you're still in first place by three games. And that is not to be celebrated, but it's not, it's not an insult. It's not an insult. And I, I think I've said this in every video. But take advantage of this. You do this does present opportunity. You can literally upgrade everywhere right now. And you know, I don't think that you're probably gonna find an upgrade on catcher and center field because of what they do defensively and what they have in the past done offensively. I doubt it. But you could. You could make Cal Rally your designated hitter if you found somebody somehow better than him defensively and better than him. I, I don't know who that is. I don't think Will Smith or JT Romito, who's hurt. I don't think those guys are being traded to Seattle, but you could. You could argue that Luis Robert is, well, he'd still probably play him in left field. But you'd understand what I'm saying, probably. This video may be terrible, by the way. I'm just going to acknowledge that. I woke up at 7 a.m. and was like, oh, crap, I have to record my OI. <laughs> but you could upgrade anywhere. And that's both a problem because, look, you can upgrade anywhere. But you can also look at that as opportunity and say, wow, we have the ability, while being a first-place team, to make ourselves better. We have no – We you also obviously have financial constraints because you're the Seattle freaking Mariners. But you have no positional constraints. There's nowhere you cannot upgrade. That's the good news and the bad news, because unfortunately, barring a massive trade where you're bringing in five or six new hitters, you're still going to be a below average offense. You're still going to be a below average offense. But you can and you should upgrade at a bunch of positions, and that, pre that presents opportunity. I'm being a I'm being an optimist here. You can definitely upgrade at first base. You can absolutely upgrade at second base at this point. Josh Rojas, nice game yesterday. Absolutely upgradable. It would be better if he was a utility player. Both the corner outfield spots are upgradable. Center field, I'd prefer Julio's defense out there. But if you found a great center fielder and you wanted to make him the best left fielder in baseball defensively, because the offense just isn't good enough right now, not even close, you could do it. Designated hitter for sure. There's nowhere. Shortstop, I hope I mentioned that. Absolutely, you could upgrade there. Go make J.P. Crawford one of the best defensive second basemen. There is opportunity in this. But there's also, if you don't, the opportunity that you're going to be the first team in the wild card era to not make the postseason despite having a 10-game division lead at one point. It's never happened in the wild card era. Please hit like. Please hit subscribe. 
Can't remember who Baltimore's starting today. I do know that the Mariners are starting Logan Gilbert, and that is good because he's been great. Oh, yeah. It's Dean Kramer with Corbin Burns. Burnsy starting Thursday. You need to win this game. You really need to win this game. You've lost three straight, and you have, in my personal opinion, your ace on the mound. So, and a reminder for those of you who stuck around through this rambling that we are going live for that game. We will have a fun time doing a live Maya Y, but it's only for Maya Y enthusiasts. It's five bucks, five bucks a month. You get some cool content, you support me, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks for the support, everybody. Go make this team better, guys. Go make it better.